Hey everybody, and welcome to Comics from the Future. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. And we are here with Infinity Flux Comics. So, uh, you may get more used to seeing Matt's, <laughs> I almost said lovely mug. <laughs> uh, uh, Jason is actually, uh, as you know, we're a comic book store. We are expanding, so he's taking some time to renovate and get all of our uh, stuff ready for a big expansion that's coming up. So... Uh, Matt is has stepped in mm -hmm. uh, to fill in on right. his behalf. Super excited! So thanks for having me. Uh, sorry to you guys <laughs> for for having to stare at this every week, but yeah. <laughs> I said it's a lovely mug. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's the thing. Um, you know, we had you. You've this isn't your first time sure, doing this. Right, We've yeah. done it a few times. Yeah. So, uh, I, but to get into it, this is kind of a. Um, small-ish week we still have you know i try to hit you know around 70 something images to show off but dc's not here this week they had last week was a double week for them because of the holiday coming up so you're going to see more marvel you're going to see more independent things and sometimes it's good because we get to spotlight maybe some stuff that would have been pushed yeah, to for sure to the back yeah so let's get into what we got going on this week starting with our featured comics First off, we have X-Men Before the Fall, Heralds of Apocalypse number one. That's a mouthful. Uh, so this is actually a one-shot that is leading up to the new Fall of X. Um, big storyline. I feel like a lot of people are really excited about the Fall mm -hmm. of X stuff. Uh, find out how are the X-Men going to uh, come out of that. Yeah, what is going to fall and what what is it going to look like afterwards? Like, yeah, exactly. Really so, uh, I what this is doing, and they're doing a couple of one-shots like this, they are pulling in uh, kind of the big key players. Apocalypse has been gone for a while, but he is uh, coming back. He has been out uh, with Genesis, his wife, after the X of Swords storyline, but he is coming back. It says we're going to learn the origin of Arako in this, uh, and what has been going on at the Quiet Council while he's been gone, and how is he going to feel about uh, all of their changes and everything they've made. Probably not too happy. Uh, I think we're going to be setting Apocalypse back up to be the villain that we know he's going to be. So uh, that is uh, our kind of next one shot. I think there's maybe like two more one shots uh, to come for the Fall of X. But this is our A cover. We also have our Lionel U cover there with his Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And we have a Stormbreakers variant. I like that one. That doesn't feature any <laughs> Apocalypse whatsoever. Next is a new book called The Hunger and the Dusk. I want to say this is a 12-issue series. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's 12 issues. This one's written by G. Willow Wilson of Poison Ivy fame, yep. most recently Poison Ivy, uh, with art by Christian Wild Goose, who was the artist on this cover right here. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a new fantasy book. So we don't have, there's not as many fantasy books mm -hmm. out on the shelves as you might think. I know a lot of people like fantasy. There's not that many comics, but this is a new one. It sounds really cool. Uh, this, play, this takes place on a dying world where only human and orcs remain, and they're uh, as you might suspect, they're usually at odds with each other. But there's a new race known as the Vangal, who uh, they arrive from across the sea, and it's they they want the planet for themselves. So the humans and the orcs are going to have to sort of uh, team up, make an uneasy alliance to take down this um, this new this new race, these new beings that are coming across and want to take over their world. So that. Uh, um, there's a whole lot of characters. The solicitation, um, there was, there was, they mentioned a bunch of different characters and a bunch of different factions. But you can see there's a couple of them here on the cover. There's a, there's an orc healer that has to uh, basically join the party of uh, the, the human that you see here and, and their, their band of warriors as well. So uh, just a really cool sounding fantasy book. Um, again, G. Will Wilson is is on fire right now. So this is our A cover here, and then we have our a B cover by uh, Cliff Chang. Uh, there's gonna be Cliff Chang is gonna do uh, one cover for every issue of this as well. To I make like how they kind of uh, told you that, so you could be like, okay, if I like this, I can get this is the whole series. Right. I can get all the Cliff Chang covers. Yeah, and then there is a C cover by Lee. 
Yeah, I think it's interesting because you said there's not a ton of fantasy comics, mm. but the ones there are are usually licensed. Yeah, it's that's very right. rare to find like you know, a book with orcs and humans mm-hmm. and elves, that kind of thing, but that's not tied in with, like, Pathfinder, D&D, right. or something yeah. like that. Yeah, this is so totally new. So I think IP. this it's always cool when the new one comes about to see, like, what's their take on these kind of iconic fantasy races and characters? Yeah, yeah. Okay, next up, we have Heat Seeker, uh, a Gun Honey series. So if you are familiar with the Gun Honey, uh, I think there has been two volumes of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of the uh, hard case crime imprint from Titan. They are, uh, like they say, they're very reminiscent of your classic pulp crime mm-hmm. novels, kind of a whodunit or a your character's on the run from something. Well, this one is going to be written by Charles uh, Arda, which is one of the original creators of the hard case crime. And the art is by Ace uh, Continado, and it follows Joanna Tan. She's being hunted. Uh, she's part of the Gun Honey, which is like a, a group of women kind of spies. And she is being hunted by uh, some of their enemies. So she is going to a group called the uh, the Racers. Uh, the kind of something racers that are uh, there to um, help you disappear. Like that's yeah. their thing. Uh, is to help you get away from this life and everything. So she's going to try to get to there, but it's going to cost her. So if you're a fan of those hard case crime stories, uh, Gun Honey, uh, they're always a little spicy, a little adventurous. Uh, you'll definitely enjoy this one. Yeah, I read the first series, and it was really fun, really good, just like spy, action, espionage yeah. kind of stuff. I liked it. Just like you said, there's not a whole lot of fantasy. There's not a whole lot of, you know, you've got like Brubaker and Phillips that are sure. doing their yeah. thing. This is... I feel like uh, this is more of like your very short novella type yeah, stories. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is our A cover. We also have our uh, Bill Sankovich. 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 I can never <laughs> pronounce it right. Uh, cover, very uh, famous one there. And they've got a cosplay cover along with a lot of other covers you can check out on our website, infinityflux.net. And that is a perfect time to bring up our website, infinityflux.net. So you can head over there, you can pre-order comics, you can subscribe. Uh, If you subscribe, you get 10% off everything in your pull list, Uh, or you can just order individual covers or the variant covers you like, anything like that over at infinityflux.net. So, yeah, I'm very excited about that one. I've liked all the Gun Honey stuff. Yeah, they've been fun, a lot of fun. Next up. Carnage Reigns Omega. So this is the end of the Carnage Reigns storyline that has been uh, going on between the Miles Morales Spider-Man and the Carnage title and Red Goblin. Uh, I think it's just those three. And uh, I don't. We're not quite at the end yet, but this issue coming out soon is the end. Um, and uh, Cletus Cassidy finally gets what he's after, uh, and he unlocks new terrifying possibilities with his and always extreme biote armor. Uh, which which is great. It's you hard know, to say. Yeah, extreme bio armor. Uh, you know, Miles is already having a... <clears throat> where we're at in the story so far, Miles is already having a tough time taking him down, even with Scorpion's help. So if Cletus Cassidy gets an upgrade to his extreme bio armor, like, I don't know how he's going to deal with that. But this also sets the stage for the next Venom epic as well. I don't know if we know what that is yet, because I know there's the end of the Venomverse books that are coming out and there's um, kind of the it's the whole summer, summer of symbiotes. Symbiotes. yeah so it it factors into that somehow but i'm just not sure if we know what that next venom story is yet but uh it's a really fun uh really fun kind of reminds me of like the old school like or in the 90s the maximum carnage storyline where it just sort of wove itself in between all the spider-man books and all these different heroes and villains were just kind of uh, pouring in and, and all fighting each other so it's it's really fun so we have the a cover here uh we also have the apollo uh, sakura variant and then we have the tarn clark connecting variant yeah this one wasn't as you can see not final oh, right, but yeah. uh, even when they do this i'm like oh that's cool yeah i like the neat. i like the kind of sketch cover vibe of it yeah yeah no i like that cover there too. and there's his the, uh yeah, his that armor oh yeah that, that's big too yep he grew he, he he goes big. Yeah, Carnage goes big. Beefy. Okay, next up we have a new Power Rangers one-shot. This is Power Rangers Unlimited Coinless. 
uh, and this is by Adam uh, Cesar and Moses Hidalgo, and great Dan Mora cover. Oh, of, I love you it. know, doing great stuff with the Power Rangers. Um, this is going to be a one shot that's kind of setting up a lot of the big stuff coming with Power Rangers as Lord Draken, a uh, fan favorite character, the alternate universe version of the White Ranger, is having to put together a team of the Coinless, which are kind of uh, former Power Rangers in this kind of dystopian universe that have had their, their morphing tokens taken away. And uh, he is going to pull these misfits together to create a team to save their, uh, uh, their world. So... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Technical problems there. Uh, yeah, so they can save their world. And this is all also leading up to, we're about to hit the 30th anniversary of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, yeah. which is a, uh, makes me feel. Old. I know, it's depressing. Yeah, so that is that cover. Then we have, this is the Montez foil variant. And that's it. Uh, next is a Bone Orchard Tenement. So this is the new uh, series. This is going to be a 10-part series, part of the, the Bone Orchard Mythos shared horror universe written by Jeff Lemire. Uh, this is featuring art by Dave Stewart and then uh, Andrea Sorrentino. So, you know, Lemire and Sorrentino, they've teamed up on a bunch of different yeah. uh, stuff, and then this is the new one. So uh, this, is, uh, this features seven residents in a building and the dark secrets that bind them. And it starts with a death that feels a little bit more sinister than natural. So, uh, you know, somebody died in our building. That's sad. Oh, wait, but what is it? What really happened? Uh, that's what we're going to learn across the um, across these 10 issues. There are some preview pages on this, uh, on Previous World. So if you want to take a look and see what that looks like, kind of get a feel for it. But uh, if you've read the other Bone Orchard uh, stories and you're into those, uh, this is the next one. I really like the last one, the uh, the the feathers one. Yeah, was that the one shot? There was a one shot. There was a one shot, and then there was uh, a, a mini series. It was like a thousand black feathers or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right. That was really good too. Yeah. So our A cover here is by Sorrentino. We have our B cover by Ward. Uh, our C cover is by Simmons, and then we have a blank sketch variant as well. Okay, so those were our featured number ones, but there's still more number ones, especially since there's a lot of indie stuff this mm -hmm. week. So let's get into those, starting with Chilling Adventures Camp Pickens. This is a one shot in the Archie verse. I, I, they need to, I think it was originally called like the, the Chilling Adventures universe yeah. or whatever, but it's their horror side of Archie. I didn't even realize that this was this was another Archie horror book. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this one's really fun. Uh, I like how they're doing the one shot so you get a lot of different flavors. Yeah. This one's an anthology style. And in this one, if you can't tell, very reminiscent of your classic uh, camp slasher type movies. Uh, with this one, the Archie crew are going to be camp counselors. But of course, there's I'm sure there's going to be some people showing up dead and all of that sounds like a lot of fun. What I think is really cool about this, this is just the the comic nerd in me. Uh, this is one of the stories is by Tim Seeley, and the art is by Mike Norton. There was a book called Revival that was really okay. good. That was kind of a uh, a pseudo zombie story they did years ago. It was right when I started getting into comics again. Uh, so it's cool when books like this reunite classic teams yeah. to do something very yeah. similar to what they did. So this is our A cover for that. And we also have a Francavia variant. And anytime I think uh, Archie and horror and Francavia, I think about the Afterlife with Archie, yeah. which was so good. Like, like that. Like Archie is one of my favorite horror franchises, even though it's not really. <laughs> yeah. But because of that book and the art, it was just so much fun. It was so good, so creepy. Uh, I'll, I can't wait for this. Yeah, when you see the cover like this, yeah. it looks like an issue of Afterlife Absolutely. with Archie. Yeah. Next one is Starfire, Star Starfinder. <laughs> Doing our short show, you yeah. called it Starfire the whole time. Did I, really? I didn't interrupt you, but I was like, uh, uh, "You're too oh, big no. of a too yeah. big of a Titans fan." Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Starfinder, sorry, Angels Drift number one. So this is based on the uh, the Starfire Starfinder. <laughs> you I get it. Starfinder in my notes. <laughs> this is based on the Starfinder RPG, which. Um, I'm not very familiar with, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's not a board game, but you know, the miniatures and, and, and guidebooks and things like that. And it made me start wondering, 
Um, do we have any here at the store? I was at home. I wasn't sure. So I went to infinityflex.net and searched for Starfinder. And sure enough, there's there several several things, guidebooks, uh, starter packs, miniatures, things like that that you could find on our website if, uh, if that is your thing. So this is a comic based on all of that stuff. Written by uh, James L. Sutter with art by Adu Mena. Um, this is this features five down on their luck mercenaries who are attempting to uh, bring starship technology to a desolate planet, but there are sinister forces bent on exploiting that new world, and that is going to lead the two of the, those two factions into conflict. So uh, it sounds really fun. So this is you know we talked about not a lot of uh, fantasy books, so this is the complete other end of the spectrum. <laughs> not a lot of well, I guess there's more like high sci-fi books. Yeah. Um, but still, a lot of those are based on existing IP. Well, this one is too. But uh, but yeah, so if you're a Starfinder fan or any, anything like that, this might be right up your alley. Or if you want to, a good introduction to maybe the lore yeah. of it. That's what I'm always interested in. Yeah, because like, especially with things like Warhammer, like I don't know anything about that, but anytime I see any Warhammer stuff, I'm like, I want to get immersed in that world yeah. because it all looks so cool. Uh, and this is, would be a great way to get immersed in this world as well. So we have our A cover here. Uh, our B cover is by Pace, and our C cover is uh, by Mena, who is the the uh, the artist on the book. So that's what the inside uh, could look like. Okay, next up we have Victory, number one. This is a, uh, I don't want to say it's a spinoff of Vampirella. Victory has mm. been around for a while, but this is her getting her own solo title. So this is by David Walker and Brett Weldell. And in this, uh, Victory used to be kind of an ex-lover of Vampirella. Then she went on to be uh, a pawn to Vampirella's mother as kind of uh -huh. an enemy. And she's a really interesting character. She's not just like a copy-paste of Vampirella. She's got her own powers. She has a demon ring that is kind of the source of her abilities. And uh, in this one, we're going to learn more of her backstory and kind of look to the future of her charting her own path, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not just following in Vampirella's footsteps, but what is her path in this. So it sounds really cool if you're a fan of the uh, vampy, Vampyverse. Uh, you'll want to check it out. I don't know if that's official, but I... It should be. I, it I, is I, now. Yeah. I like the sound of it. Uh, so sounds really cool. This is our A cover. We also have a Brian Hitch variant, which oh. they're pulling in some uh, big names. Yeah. On, he's, on he's, he's busy over at Marvel right now doing yeah. all the Ultimate stuff. So We also have, this is our Diaz cover and our Cohen variant as well. Next is a new one called Wilds End. This is the first of a six-issue miniseries written by Dan Abnett with art by INJ Colbert. Uh, this is cool because the, the this is another like anthrop anthropomorphic uh, series like Black Sad. Um, you know, uh, characters of, of you know cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. No. <laughs> um, but this takes place in an alien-occupied interwar England, and there is a um, there is a boat crew that was out at sea. And then this big alien invasion took place in England, and then when they came back, uh, England doesn't look like, you know, they were gone when it all happened, so it, this is all, like, new stuff to them. Uh, so what are they going to do? How are they going to react? How are they going to fight back? I don't know what they're going to do. But, um, yeah, it's I, this one sounds really, really cool because I, I just like the idea. They go out to sea. They're completely isolated. You know, England looked one way when they left, and when they came back, it's completely different. So uh, I'm interested to see what uh what they do when they come back so this is our a cover here uh and we also have a b uh b cover this is an homage but what's i don't know what it's an i'm not sure what to. it's an homage of but it's, it's very cool yeah he, he's kind of looks like uh what's the the crime hound oh the yeah McGruff. <laughs> McGruff the crime <laughs> right <hound. laughs> Okay, next up, we've got some cool covers and other comics. This is issue twos and threes, and cool covers we didn't want you to miss out on. So let's get into it, starting with Amazing Spider-Man. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 28. Uh, this is post the craziness. It, we have not gotten to yet, right, but right. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it here, but you've probably heard what is going to happen in issue number 26. Uh, but uh, I'm guessing... We're dealing with Doc Ock, who has definitely got an upgrade in this. He's on a rampage through Oscorp. But I have a feeling a lot of this, too, is going to be fallout from right. what happened yeah. in 26. They just can't talk about it too much because sure. it's still a spoiler. This is our McGinnis 
cover, which is doing the interior artist, which I'm very excited mm -hmm. about. I love McGinnis. We also have, <laughs> this is the Casa Grande Stormbreakers variant. And we have this Ooh. beautiful Wernick Pride variant. That's very nice. Very illuminating. Next we have Daredevil and Echo number two. Uh, this is written by <coughs> um, uh, B. Earl and Taboo with art by Phil Noto. Phil Noto. Uh, the Demo Goblin. I think after, at the end of issue one we saw the Demo Goblin, um, and I think it's I think it's a new one. I think it's a new female yeah, Demo Goblin. Yeah, I, I thought so. Uh, the Demo Goblin, this new Demo Goblin, has been kidnapping children across the city, um, and we don't really know why yet, but uh, it does seem like it has something to do with a more sinister force that's lurking underneath Hell's Kitchen. And Daredevil and Echo are going to have to sort of team up. Uh, they, they, um, they, they ran into each other again in issue number one. They hadn't seen each other in a while. And now they're going to have to, to form another alliance to take down the Demo Goblin and maybe whatever else uh, <laughs> lead, that, that leads them to that. So um, the, the, we, this is the second issue. This is our A cover here. We have our Alex Horley variant and then a David Mack variant. Very cool. Next up, we have She-Hulk number 14. Uh, She-Hulk has been really fun recently now that we have this character in there called Scoundrel. Yeah, he's great. That, he's so much fun. He's 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 a scoundrel in love in it. Yeah. He's very like uh, Robin Hood or uh, almost like uh, Wesley from Princess Bride. Yeah. Where he's very yeah. like, I'm kind of a bad guy, but I'm just having a good time. Yeah. Uh, he's not mean at he's all. He's very charming. Yeah, a very charming. He's a villain. charming gentleman thief. And this, he keeps having run-ins with She-Hulk. And in this one, she is going on full detective mode to find out the full story of Scoundrel. What's his origin and kind of what is his deal? What's he trying to do? So I'm really excited about this. I've loved She-Hulk uh, this whole series. Yeah, it's been great. Plus, we have a incredible. Uh, Derek Chu variant. That may be my favorite cover of this entire series yeah. so far. That this something about that I just love that. That looks so good. Yeah, I'd you'd be scared if she comes at you with that anchor. With that big anchor, yeah. yeah. Next is Silk number two, continuing Silk's mini series. This is a five issue mini series written by Emily Kim with art by I don't know how to pronounce Yi Yi Guara. Um Iguara. I, Iguara. Okay, I wasn't sure. Uh, but Silk is trapped in a dream world. That keeps resetting itself. And this one finds her uh, in this the stream world that she is in this issue. She is in the Old West. She's a web slinging, train robbing uh, outlaw. And how is she? She's got to figure out how to get out. I don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, we don't know how it's going to happen. But uh, I love, I hope that she rides a horse just like uh, <laughs> on that cover there. But um, yeah, it's always cool to see spider people in a new environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is our A cover here. And then we have our Romy Jones variant. Very cool. Is she web slinging or silk slinging? Um, probably. I guess silk because silk. she her her costume comes from. It'd be weird if it was web. So yeah, it, I guess it's silk, silk slinging. Yeah, silk. silk slinging. Next up, we have yeah. Star Wars: Darth Vader, Black, White, and Red, number three. So since this is only a four issue miniseries, this is our penultimate issue. We get our third and uh, almost final part of Jason Aaron's ongoing story that's going through this plus. Uh, a second story that they didn't give us too much information about, but it's always exciting to see what that's going to be. This is our A cover for that. And we also have this uh, Carnero variant. Mm -hmm. And then next up we have uh, Dr. Afra, which I'm very excited about. Afra has, uh, is teaming up with Luke as he is he's on this desperate quest to find uh, a crystal for his new lightsaber, new Kyber crystal. Uh, he does not have that one that's on the cover. It got crushed. Uh, but I like the yellow. But, you know, Dr. Afra is a archaeologist, mm. so she knows where to find this kind of stuff, okay. is this uh, ancient Jedi lore, and maybe the means to build a lightsaber, which Luke was never trained in. But, oh, yeah. of course, Afra is, uh, you know, she's kind of a dubious person, so she's got something in it for her as well, and that could include Darth Vader. So she could be leading Luke right into a So trap. is this where he's going to get the crystal for the green lightsaber? I believe in this in... story okay. arc is where nice. we're going to get that. I'm very excited about that. Uh, yeah, his yellow one got crushed in along with his robot hand oh, no. in, a, in a previous one. So uh, this is our A cover for that. 
Then we have this uh, David Marquez variant, which they've been doing these really inter interesting ones that are Star Wars, Dr. Aphra, or whatever book. And it says starring, and this one, oh, you've yeah. got Ayla Sakura. Uh, the previous one said Shock T, uh, which at this point in the storyline, both are dead. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's cool that they're featured on these covers, but the uh, starring is not actually accurate. Yeah, well, it's just a picture of their grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just in remembrance. Yeah. Uh, we also have this uh, Jimenez Pride variant. We also have the uh, Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary cover. I love this scene where it's very relevant to this issue where yeah. Vader takes Luke's lightsaber and goes, oh, I see you crafted a new mm -hmm. lightsaber. Uh, and just having Vader staying there holding a green lightsaber is so cool. Yeah. We also, this is a super interesting thing. I'm a little insider knowledge because I'm working on Star Wars with Dark Horse. But, uh, so Phase 2 of High Republic is wrapping up. And uh, the scheduling for High Republic Adventures has been a little off. So uh, they have kind of a strict deadline of when all of the High Republic uh, books need to be out. So to meet that deadline, we are getting issues. Uh, what is the issues... Six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight, uh, pretty much the same week. Uh, wow. Okay. I don't, I'm not. I know at least two of them are the same week. I'm not sure if maybe they'll push the the last issue another week. But if you're a fan of High Republic Adventures, you're getting, uh, you know, a big old mouthful yeah. all at once of but those. What's important to note about that, though, even if they aren't coming out uh, on exactly the same day, they are. You do need to pre-order them all this weekend if right. you want it. Because so even like number eight. This is this is the last time you can pre-order it this weekend, along with six and seven. So yeah. So if you ever want some behind-the-scenes things, uh, scheduling is always a th fun thing with comics. Yeah. And they have dates; they got to get everything out. So great job on this team getting all of this done and ready to go out all at once. Uh, and I'm very excited to see how this story wraps up. So here is that was issue six. This is issue seven, and we have issue eight. Next is Captain America, Symbol of Truth, number 14. Uh, this is written by uh, Tochi Onibuchi with art by uh, Zay Carlos. So this is after, this is the aftermath of the Cold War storyline. Mm. Um, we don't exactly know how that's wrapped up yet because right now it, this, the storyline's not finished. But this is after all that. Uh, Sam Wilson returns to Harlem with a new sense of focus. Uh, Misty Knight is with him. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do after this. Like, we, we're not really sure what the direction is for him. Of course, he's hanging out with the Avengers over in the Avengers. But uh, what's he going to do in this book? We're not really sure yet. But uh, it'll be fun to find out. So uh, this is our uh, Cam and Coley Ultimate variant. Yep. Yep. And then... Storm. Oh, Storm number two. Sorry, that was mine too. <laughs> yep. Uh, I missed this one. Um, the this now this is another one of the miniseries that kind of takes mm -hmm. place back in uh, not in the '90s, but like around that time period, or maybe even as far back as the '80s when she had her her, her mohawk, yeah. right? Um, so uh, I flipped through the first one. I didn't read it, but it looked really cool. I wanted yeah. to go back and see that. Uh, this is the second issue. So if you are uh, reading this mini series, I'd be sure to not miss this. So this is our this is our A cover, and then we have our Adam Kubert Ultimate Last Look, and then our uh, Vicentini Stormbreaker variant. Yeah, this was a cool book because it takes place uh, just as Storm's kind of taking over the leadership role of the X Men. Right. But the the team isn't necessarily, you know, they're all for her, but she really has to earn their respect as a leader. Yeah. And she's dealing with Kitty Pride, who is very young and very kind of wants to do her own thing. Uh, you have Rogue that just became a hero because she just left the Brotherhood. And she's kind of difficult to work with. So Storm has a lot on her plate. Also, there's a new villain that shows up that uh, seems to also have some weather powers as well. Ooh. So, very interesting uh, series yeah. there. So, next up is Thor, issue 35. This is the finale of the Blood of My Father story. And in this one, it is an all-out fight between Thor and Doom to prevent Doom from being able to control humankind in the past, present, and future. And this is our uh, Daniel Warren Johnson variant. Oh, yeah. And we also have our 
Uh, this is the Laraz Ultimate Last Look variant. I'm wondering these Ultimate Last Look, I get it's their Ultimate Universe look. Is it like the last thing we saw them wearing? Like the last look before Maybe, that's what I, was confused. They I don't come know what back? last look means. Yeah, I get like, yes, this is Ultimate Thor. Yeah. We had the uh, version of Ultimate Storm. But I'm, I'm not sure what the last look is. Maybe when we read the uh, upcoming... Ultimate Invasion. Maybe yeah, that's maybe we'll a, a term that we'll, we'll be seeing. Yeah. Warlock Rebirth number three, uh, written by Ron Mars, art by Ron Lim. This is another one of the miniseries that sort of takes place back in the continuity of the 90s. Um, we have been, in this series, we have been introduced to Eve, which is Adam Warlock's female counterpart. Uh, and Adam Warlock and Doctor Strange are going to have to fight Eve in this issue to escape the soul world, which uh, I guess maybe he's stuck inside of his own uh, <laughs> forehead. Oh no, she took the gym. Yeah, I she, think. Took, yeah, she it. took it. So yeah, they are trapped and they're going to have to fight her to get out. So this is our Hawthorne variant. And next up, we've got I Hate Fairyland number six. This is actually beginning a new story arc. Uh, they, we are back in Fairyland and the new king of Fairyland. Uh, needs Gert's help for something that also involves Gert. She needs to, the, the king needs to hire Gert to deal with Gert. So hmm. we'll have to see what that means. It seems like a, it could be an easy job or a hard job. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, but of course, hijinks ensue. Mm -hmm. So this is our A cover from our interior artist, Bean. We also have the Bean uh, variant. We have a Peach Momoko variant. But also, they do like the regular and the, the explicit covers. Uh, there is This is the regular one, and then oh. the explicit <laughs> Peach Momoko variant. We also have a Powell variant. So you get a little goon uh, feel there. Some Eric Powell. And a Jim Mafood variant, which I'm getting a lot of Tank Girl vibes yeah. from. Yeah, yeah. Arcade Kings number two. This is a five issue miniseries from Image Comics, written and drawn by Dylan Burnett. Uh, the first issue was a lot of fun, um, very stylized, very colorful, uh, a lot of emphasis on video games, but also, uh, like, uh, so our character Joe here is extremely good at uh, fighting games, but he's also a pretty good fighter in real life. He is uh, traveling the land looking for his missing brother. Um, in this issue, uh, those travels take him to the town, to the ghost town, excuse me, of Rockview, the, which is the home of a character named Plum Karana, who has a bone to pick with Joe and his entire family. So, um, I don't know what that looks like yet. Is he going to, he, he's obviously going to want to fight Joe. Uh, it looks like Joe here, uh, maybe has met his match because <laughs> he handled the first guy in the first issue pretty handily. But maybe not so much here. So this is a really fun book. Uh, like I said, very colorful, very fun. Good action, good storytelling. Uh, and this is our uh, A cover by Burnett. And then we have a B cover by Superlog. Okay, next up we have King Spawn number 23. Just wanted to show this off. Some yeah, great cool. covers for this. this. Spawn continues. All the Spawn books have some of the best covers in comics. Just, you know, definitely so appealing. You see the cover, you're like, I got to know what's happening in that. Yeah. So this is our A cover by Stevens. And our B cover by uh, Tomaselli, which also I love. Very atmospheric. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool. Okay, next up we have other printings and graphic novels. These are uh, reprints of some of the books you may have missed or you may want to get all the printings of. And some graphic novels we think you'll be interested in starting with. Uh, the Invincible Iron Man by Jerry Duggan, trade paperback. So this is collecting the first uh, several issues of the, of the new uh, Iron Man series that's out right now. Uh, the, it's, the title is Demon in Armor. Uh, this series has been pretty good so far. Uh, this most recent issue that just came out, I'm not sure if it's collected in this one, but it was really, really good because it mostly took place like back uh, around the time of the 80s when he was wearing the Silver Centurion armor. But uh, this uh, this book has been great so far. Uh, it's been, you know, Tony Stark uh, doesn't have his, his, million, his billions anymore. He used all that money buying uh, all of the... Uh, you know, world-threatening weapons off of the black market, and he's storing them all in a warehouse, which doesn't <laughs> seem too too smart. Um, but uh, you know, he's down to his last suit of armor. His uh, his company has undergone a corporate takeover, um, so you know he's, he's trying to get it back. Um, and he's fighting new villains, and somebody's framed him for murder. Like everything's going wrong for Tony <laughs> in this trade paperback. But it's a really good uh, series so far. And if you're wanting to catch up on it, this would be a great book to get. 
Next up is Invincible Volume 1. This is a new printing of it, this time with the cover uh, of the Amazon show version, mm -hmm. which I think is super cool. Uh, I can't wait to see how they do each of these as they release them, who's going to be on them. But this uh, collects issues one through seven. If you don't know anything about Invincible, just read it. It's my favorite series of all time. Fantastic. And uh, the first seven issues are, are great. And uh, if you've never watched the show or read it, you don't know what it's about, it is... Uh, uh, be prepared for feels a little bit like uh, Superman mixed with Spider-Man and then it gets real hardcore yeah. right there and issues uh, six and seven. So uh, highly, highly recommend uh, Invincible. If you've never read it, maybe you just watched the show, but you never read it, pick this up. It is sixteen ninety nine. It's great that Invincible has been, the, the series, the comics have been over for a good while yes. now, several years. Um, but it's great that they're still so available because you can easily find the big paperback compendiums mm -hmm. that collect like 50 issues each. They're also releasing now hardcovers of that as well. But now we have smaller, more digestible uh, trade paperbacks collecting just a few issues. So there's still it's still so easy to get this series. I mm -hmm. love that it's just so available for yeah, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's very... Uh, a bunch of different formats, a varying price rate. Like, it's yeah, great. It's, it's very awesome. uh, perennial... Uh, you know, evergreen title. Yeah, it's just, yeah. you know, if you've never read it, jump in now. Yeah. Next is one I'm really excited <laughs> I, about. <laughs> I, I, I put this on you because I'm like, oh, you're going to have a lot to say yeah, about this. Yeah, this is great. So this is the Daredevil by Mark Wade Omnibus. Um, this, uh, this is a great run. It started back in 2011, I believe. So for the last several years, uh, Chips and RC has been writing a fantastic Daredevil run, but it's, it's, it's a little bit darker, a little bit more moody. Daredevil's being put through the ringer. This run from Mark Wade from a little more than 10 years ago features a more lighthearted Daredevil. If you guys have seen the panel uh, of Matt Murdock when he's at a Christmas party wearing a red sweatshirt that says, I am not Daredevil. That's yeah. what this is from. Uh, it's a very um, still action-packed, uh, a lot of great art by Chris Samney on this. Um, so a lot of good action, a lot of good story, but it's it's much more lighthearted than than the Bendis or the Brubaker run or the Z Zadarsky run or the Frank Miller stuff. Uh, but it still works. So that's what's great about Daredevil is there are different versions, different flavors of him, and they all work. So um, this it has been collected before. This is a new printing, but I'm very excited for this. So we have our. Uh, uh, Neil Adams direct market cover, and then we have our Paolo Rivera cover on this as well, which this was the uh, cover to the very first issue of that whole run. Yeah, I was reading this series as it came yeah. out, and it was one of the ones that, like, you know, you'd always talk about. It was same with, like, around that time frame, you had Hawkeye mm -hmm. uh, by Matt Fraction. Yeah. You had this, like, tone of a lot of the Marvel books that at that time that people were really into. Yeah, so. and it was more or less its own thing. I think this is when he moved back to San Francisco uh -huh. for a while, which he hadn't been in there since the 70s. So just such a great run of Daredevil. Very stylish. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have a facsimile edition of Amazing Spider-Man 122. So this is the big fight between Spider-Man and Green Goblin after the death of Gwen Stacy. So I love how, you know, this isn't... A lot of the facsimiles we've been seeing are, like, you know, very, very iconic. Mm -hmm. This is a very iconic issue, but not maybe one that people have read or reread or right. anything. This one is a, a little deeper of a cut. So, uh, if you want to check that out, a very classic Spider-Man story, you can pick up this facsimile that includes all the original ads and everything. Yep. And then we have a facsimile edition. This is the foil variant of Incredible Hulk number 181, Wolverine's second appearance. Don't at me. It's his second <laughs> appearance. 180 is his first. Um, but a classic but classic cover. Uh, we have actually a graded copy of this in the store, but it's a, it's a 0 0.5 grade. But it's still really cool to see uh, in a slab. Um, but yeah, just everybody is familiar with this issue, and we are getting a facsimile again with all the original ads, all the original everything. Um, and yeah, this is a, a foil variant. So. Yeah, definitely check with your store. So uh, Marvel's going to be doing a lot of foil mm -hmm. facsimile variants. And the price is basically determined by your store because uh, basically what they show on the cover is what they're charging the store. So check with your store about what they've got it priced at. Uh, but it still shouldn't be that much. Yeah. Um, and it's open order, so. Yeah, and the, they, there, was a, there was a Batman comic that was a, a facsimile edition uh, recently that was the classic cover but all foiled out. And it was so cool to see 
that classic cover, mm-hmm. but in foil. So yeah. I can't wait to see this one in foil. Yeah, I guess one great. of the most iconic covers ever. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that is our show. That was our last book. So thank you so much for watching Comics from the Future. Uh, if you want to order any of these, you can head over to infinityflux.net where we will have uh, all of these up for pre-order or you can subscribe to them. Like we said, everything you subscribe to, you can get 10% off. And uh, Matt, thank you for joining us. And I sure. can't wait to see what uh, what the future holds. Me too. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we'll see y'all next time. Uh, check out our show uh, on, uh, we'll probably have a show on Monday covering all of the new books coming out then. Uh, it's a smaller week, so uh, you'll have to check that out. But until next time, see ya. See you later.